it, it also has to do with with you know going back to when we were kids. It's that feeling because we, when we one amazing characteristic that we have when we were little is that we didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have everything to to create, and and you can you know you can build uh, the world. So when you get in that state, you have like that opportunity yeah. again, like to re rebuild. Yeah. You can reverse yeah. like decisions you made back then. And and then also too, you know, kind of referencing um, Blake, right? This is what Blake was kind of talking about with. Uh, the child and, and I remember like when I was getting into Blake and, and, and reading about Allen Ginsberg I had this dream and it and it was uh, this dream it like there was like this thing that kept on echoing about like um, holy eyes and it is referencing like you know like if the doors of perception were cleansed you'll see reality for truly what it is you know and then it's so, uh, uh, that dream was referencing Blake but I, I believe, you know, it's it's that innocence of that fresh blank slate and, and the not collapsing of any of those possibilities. Because there's the, the, the reason why I, I love Cosmic Trigger, because there's this one passage in it where Robert Downtown Wilson is talking about his kids and like the there was two, his son was like like one years old or something and then daughter was like three or four and like whispers something to like the toddler before like they're going to sleep or whatever and then later he asks like what did you say and she's like oh i was asking him how does god's touch feel like because i'm i'm beginning to not remember or something like that and just like even like that young age like her voicing that like oh that's like purity of of awareness and consciousness is closer to like you know my words are going to be like to the source or whatever you know <laughs> which is interesting and then you know, going back to that one article that i said about how language affects like your primary yeah, yeah affects uh, your perception no it, it everything you know like spanish mm -hmm. spanish is it's, it's it's more poetic you know like yeah and yeah and it has this all uh, but that's that's the interesting thing about like unraveling this whole thing with the mayans and understanding it from from their perspective and how they use language and with those symbols they're dynamic um it's a lot more analogous to like you know chinese characters and they're it's like relative to the concept and like one one symbol can mean you know 50 different things and it's all in, in context to to like the count but i was reading this thing it's called cosmoletics like you know dia, dialectic or cosmoletic anyways the the person was saying about this linguist was talking about the caribbean and and how he he didn't want to use dialectic to like talk about like the communication he want to use tidal tidalectic like the tides and he's like all, all their stuff has to do with the tides and this and that because you know they they traveled around yeah. and the currents and, and, and all this kind of stuff so like that's what the rhythm and the logic of their communication is and then and then so she says I want to expand on that for, for understanding the Mayans and, and anything um, Mesoamerican like literature of, of their perspective it's a uh, cosmoletics uh, meaning it's all in relationship to the cosmos and in alignment with the yeah. cosmos like that's how you understand how they use the, the walls, how they oh use certain uh, symbols and stuff like that. So they were they were talking about their selves too, but also in like reflection into the bigger uh, mandala, right? And, yeah. and that's what these things would mean and what they were trying to get into and, and the different things that they were talking about. And so like this, that idea of, because that's what I liked about, about uh, Taoist, <laughs> I remember the first time I read the Tao Te Ching, I got it from my girlfriend because she knew I was into like uh, Jack Kerouac and Buddhist like stuff. So she gives me this book and, and, and I remember reading it in my anthropology class and I couldn't put it down. Like I was just like, oh my God, like this doesn't make, like I was normal. From there, yeah. I, was, I was used to like English logical frequency. <laughs> and this was like 
it doesn't make sense, like logical sense, but there's like some wisdom to this. I like, think that would be a good one for a, a group study. Yeah. Find a good guy to it because I I had like a, a similar feeling of yeah. like exhilaration sure. when I first discovered it. And it, 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 it messes up with, with that language thing and, you know, this Dow logic. And and I think, too, you know, the more I get into it and I, I want to let my research breathe, too, before I, I make uh, more. But they, they, there's some, um, in, in my own intuition, I know from, from my own research and from my own experiences, it's also in relationship to, like, dreams, like, not, not in this, like, a metaphorical way but like actual dreams and like there's like a certain dream logic and i was like listening to this one guy he was talking about like dmt rounds and like cl- this like clown dimension thing anyways and then and then like the tricks clown were, dimension yeah and, like, <laughs> and, and, but he was talking about like the tricksters too and like these like kind of malevolent uh, entities and then i'm just like yeah. you, you know like there there is a certain um this which i think robert anton wilson does really well and that's why i kind of like always refer to him for like bringing it into to language that we um better um understand yeah. and and use versus like reading something like uh don juan and carlos castaneda which is good but you know it's kind of like um an esoteric language but there there is a certain logic a dream logic that there is to it and i think a lot of it has to do too with this like this tone and there's like a certain ebb and flow and uh i don't know it's it's weird it's um interesting but i i do think yeah. i do think messing around with with like even the collages and and think like what willem s Burroughs says thinking a lot outside of words you know and expressing things a lot with outside of words which you know you know yeah. with, with music no, but the the symbolism, mm-hmm. you know, that the actual, the actually, we we can see the sound, you know, like in in a way, that's that's different, and it is a more fundamental language, and I think I believe it it will lead us to to the cosmos, you know, to learn that language and to understand how mm-hmm. you know like. The, how, how it works it would open the door uh, for the next level of civilization probably yeah that that is how I feel the language as well I kind of feel it's our only our only hope but when, when I try to zero in on what I mean by that it all far, falls apart which kind of gets back to how um, words are um containers i get i think that was from the um article on zhuangzi the um chinese philosopher with the story about the butterfly Mm -hmm. didn't know if it was dreaming it was a man yeah good article i kind of dismissed it at at first a little like oh he was just saying uh holding language at arm's length but then I went back and finished it, and it wasn't that at all. It was it was quite Dao to Ching, and it was pretty similar to the the stuff I'm seeing now with these these kind of wave patterns almost. Oh, uh, within vacuum, are you familiar with the uh, cards in Costa Rica? It looks like um. Oh, you uh, shared this. I'm yeah, sorry. I, I, I shared it. I just yeah, share well, it. It's because they, they use yeah. It's a typical ox court that, that they they made here, but with this kind of mandala, the wheels. They they made these mandalas at the wheels. Oh shoot, that's crazy. Yeah, that's tradition. There's kind of a. It seems like a baby tradition to me, but um, quilting is kind of mandala like a lot of barns here in the Appalachia region they'll just have like a single quilt square painted on a barn I've actually got one hanging on my wall it's a grandma made just a piece of it but 
all these patterns like share red color oh it's it's a nice little wall hanging even though it's <laughs> look how, how funny everything is connected we have this uh we have to make this concert in madrid and i get this job and i'm working for for a firm for a firm in madrid actually so i have colleagues in, in madrid now and you know like it's it's crazy <laughs> it's all connected Ah yes, so apparently one of the many DMT revelations that you are not supposed to know about is that there is no beginning or end to our existence. Our tiny corner of human level consciousness is a sort of resort or vacation for creators to forget about their immortality. Machine elves are constructed out of meshes with interlocking degrees of freedom that create an implicit high dimensional state space of possible configurations for these beings. They span a huge configuration space. Their dance moves are incredibly diverse. Often this is because it makes you feel like you learned a DMT realm trade secret. The galactic copyright system is now after you. Alternatively, it sometimes seems to be things like proof that this is a simulation that humans aren't supposed to know about. The funny thing is that I'm not even trying to be funny or smart on my comments about clown dimensions out there. I'm just reporting on what seems to be phenomenological facts. It genuinely surprises people, tricks for energy. We need some sense making on Clown Dimensions ASAP. Clown Dimensions are silly. We need to care about serious realities, like ones where multiple beings agree with what is happening and don't make jokes about it like those pesky jokers in the Clown Dimensions. It's an epistemological hand grenade for a lot of people, so to speak. I don't find it that startling, but I notice it shapes the conversation landscape significantly, but also because it is rather funny. Seriously though, those clowns are beyond anything one can conceive of. 